And now we have our presentation. We can go backwards and forwards between the two slides. Ada is a pair programmer that you can run from the command line. And yesterday I did a video on how to set it up. Now today I would like to create a presentation software to display scalable vector graphics. The reason I want to do this is that I was in the middle of doing a video and realized I needed this capability, did not want to use Canva or Google Slides. And I thought, why don't we just use Ada to recreate this software? I'm Happy Dave, let's get into it. And here's our presentation using Reveal.js and Napkin AI for image generation. And all of this was with a one-shot prompt using Ada AI. Now in this video, I'm going to use GPT-4 Canvas just to do a little bit of Q&A and write a requirements document. And then I'm going to feed that requirements document into Ada to produce the application. Now let's have a look at the problem that I'm trying to solve. So here I am on an application called Napkin and what it allows you to do is just take some lists of information and press a little button here and convert it into these graphs. We just go down to this particular list here and we click on the button. It'll go into this generation mode and from there we can select different graphs. Graphics. Now, once we select a graphic, what we can do is head over to it and click on this little button here for export, and we can export a PNG or a scalable vector graphic. Now, it's a scalable vector graphic I would like to show in a presentation. And the good thing is you can download it, or in my case, I just want to copy it to the clipboard. So I've come over to GPT Canvas where we're going to start the Q&A session and where we'll start is I would like a simple presentation of software using JavaScript library. I don't know which one to use, so let's go and find one. It needs to be able to display scalable vector graphics and I really only need about 20 word description for each type. I just want to get an idea. So it's come up with Reveal.js Impress, Reveal MD, Bespoke and Deck.js. Now I don't know the last three, but I do know the first two and the one I want to work with today I think will be Reveal.js. So I've started writing the prompt that says I plan to use Reveal J. I want to create a slide presentation with one or more slides and that they're going to be showing some headings and maybe a scalable vector graphic. Now from here, I just wanted to think about the steps that I'm going to need to do to implement this. Think about the layouts, basic capabilities, brand guidelines. So I'm probably going to want some colors. How are we going to store these and reference the scalable vector graphics? Lastly, I would like one or two simple edge cases. And let's make sure that it's not going to write any code. I only want information at the moment. So it's come up with a whole lot of guidelines and it's working on steps to consider when creating a Reveal.js presentation. Now we're looking at single SVG and a heading versus multiple. We've got brand guidelines. And what that's making me think is that we're probably going to need a to ask a question about colors and font. Then we've got where we're going to put the SVG files. We've got the slide navigation. It's assumed that that's something that can be done by Reveal.js, but there are different effects that we can load in. So this to me seems like another configuration option. And then after that, we've got what to do with missing uh, scalable vector graphics and content overflows. So that's interesting. So I think from here, we should just start writing a prompt to make this available for another developer. Now in this case the developer is going to be Ada. Now let's build the basic prompt. So we'll start off with can you turn this into a simple requirements document? We want to let it know that the programmer knows how to code in Reveal.js and that we don't want any code. I'm going to let Ada come up with the ideas and the plans rather than GPT Canvas. Uh, just give it clear guidelines. After that let's make sure it says text in a code block. That way I can just copy it and paste it directly in. We need to have configuration settings. The ones that I've worked through is that we need a slide type and the brand consideration. So to configure this, we'll go over to Canva where I've got my brand guidelines. And what we'll do is we'll just start pasting some stuff in. So we'll need a foreground color, a background color and a highlight color. I like to use yellow for that. And for the font, we'll go with BBAS new, and that's a Google font. So we'll just paste that in and let's see what it generates for us as a requirements document. As you can see, because I'm using GPT Canvas, it's now changed context because it's actually writing the document. So we've got our requirements document. If we read through it, we can see that number one is general slide 
layout requirements. So I was talking about the single scalable vector graphic or the multiple layouts. We got the brand guidelines and it's talking about how to name the asset, where the asset should be. After that, we've got additional configuration around the transition. Now, if we move down into five, six and seven, these are areas that I think I wanna change. And this is the reason why. With number five, for responsive design requirements, this is a given, this is Reveal.js. It knows how to do this. So we don't actually need to confuse the AI pair programmer with information it doesn't need to know about. A number six, which is a template based slide creation. If this was a more featured product than what I actually need, this might be a good thing to do. But I really want to replace this with a new idea. And if we look at number seven, the edge cases, I'm also not concerned about them. So what I think I'll do is say remove steps five six and seven and let's see what it does now the way gpt canvas works is it just starts writing the file and we should see it just disappear we're down to four we've got the configuration summary and the notes for implementation let's add in one more capability now i want to define one more capability and that's the ability to configure this on a multiple presentation front now i only need to use this once but i think it might make sense to configure it with a little bit of extra information so what we'll do is say i want a basic structure for a json document and i want it to have multiple slides with different attributes i probably just want to copy the scalable vector graphic asset which is a whole lot of xml put it straight into the field as an embedded concept but i may also want to store it as a file take both an image and a scalable vector graphic as embedding and there'll be a layout. i don't currently have any ideas for layout so i'll just call it default i want to put in a h1 a h2 and maybe some bullet points lastly i just want to give it some extra ruling around that scalable vector graphic and name from my point of view the embedded SVG should take precedence over the actual name field. So if we press enter on that, let's see what it generates. So it's just started writing some code down here. We've got slide structures in JSON format. Define the structure. We've got image, name. Look, this all seems to be good. We've got some attributes and we've got some notes. It's updated the requirements document with a new section at the bottom called slide structure in JSON format. And it goes from here all the way through to here. We've got an example of how the JSON document would look plus information about the attributes. Now I've come down to a terminal window and we're going to test ADA. Now I need to let you know, I haven't done this. So this way of writing the requirements document could fall flat on my face. But what we'll do is we'll make a test directory, we'll CD into it. And from that point, we can just type in A. That'll do is it'll connect to the default model, which in my case will be Claude, I think. It's asking me to create a repo. We're using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And at this point, we can just start typing prompts. I don't know yet whether I should break it down into individual prompts or do it all as one, but we should be able to go back over to our document. There's a copy button. And if we just paste it all the way in, that's a lot of information. And let's test how good this ADA system is. So at the moment, it looks like it's creating a Reveal.js presentation, main HTML file. We've got JavaScript file for configuration. We've got a sample J concept. So here's the HTML. It's come up with a custom CSS and hopefully they're the colors that we put in from our brand information. After that, we've got a configuration JS again with various configurations going on. Then the presentation and I don't actually know how to create these yet. We've got a slides JSON. And what have we got? Welcome to the presentation. We've got a H2. We've got a graphic that's been filled in as a circle with some bullet points. This looks good. And it's then telling us to make some directories. Lastly, it wants us to run it as a server. Now I'm about to follow the instructions to create this and I'm going to leave this HTML page that we're currently seeing, ChatGPT, up and running because if it creates a new page and executes it, it should just pop up automatically. So we'll press yes, we're creating HTML, CSS, JavaScript presentation. So everything that we saw in there is available. They've all been applied. It's about to make a directory. We'll do that. And lastly, we're going to run a web server and this is where hopefully it might even just pop it up for us. 
and it didn't but I typed it in and it looks like it's working now if I remember right we can do right arrow to go to the next slide and we can go backwards and forwards so that was a one-shot prompt that whole requirements document turned into what we're seeing this is my theme colors so the light brown on the dark brown with a bit of a highlight we've got a scalable vector graphic let's see if we can modify it now we've got the presentation here i'll click on the right button we go to the next one there's a problem with the image we'll have to check what that is but let's go and grab an image that we can start with so we've come over to napkin ai it turns these text areas into infographic just click on this link here we'll go export now we could work with a png that'd be fine but i want to work with a scalable vector graphics so i'll click on that and i'll press copy we'll drop over to the code and we can see things that we can change let's get rid of these bullet points and we'll hit save and looks like we'll have to refresh manually let's change this to abby dave channels will do and i'll just refresh and see what we get it says abby dave channels we've still got the image problem and it says it's looking for an image file called sample and I'm assuming it's going to go into this folder so we'll just type in sample.svg and paste in the information we copied from napkin and we come over to the website we'll refresh there it is that's looking good maybe we can make one more change to this one now we'll come back over to napkin a so let's just pick one at random i'm going to click on this text and i'm going to do a regenerate and it's regenerating right here and we should be able to scroll through and find something that we like this looks good to me we'll just click on that and we can come up and click on the export go to scalable vector graphic and put in the clipboard now if you want this product there'll be a link in the description below this is just excellent for making graphics we'll head back to vs code we've got this scalable vector graphic that's embedded this was the other way i wanted to use it so i'm just going to paste everything that we copied now there looks like an issue and it's because there's a couple of carriage returns we just remove them so we'll paste that in and hit save and we'll come back to our web page and just refresh and that worked as well so that's great it was a little bit fiddly to get the embedded scalable vector graphic into the string but otherwise i can now put this information in either as files or directly into the json document and now we have our presentation we can go backwards and forwards between the two slides and the only other changes i might want to do in the future is play around with the layout so a quick recap what we did was we worked with ada now if you want a basic installation guide there is a video related that i did yesterday then i went into chat gpt canvas i did a q a just to get the lay of the land of how i wanted to do the requirements document and then i wrote the requirements document now if you want to see a video on using a documents first approach to using pair programmers i've also got a video on that topic after that we just ran it and it created the whole application from one requirements documentation and then we played around with it and got it working in the next video i want to use the ada image to code generation technique and see if i can take this canva presentation that i've put together and turn it into slides for reveal js anyway i'm abby dave please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video